everyone. This is Jarena again. And just wanted to talk a little bit today about um, idol worship. All right? Yeah, idol worship. And I know that most of us consider idol worship as something that is a actual image that we uh, create as far as uh, something that you make. Like how they spoke about it in the um, Old Testament. We see a lot about you know, how the children of Israel and, and the other nations around them would uh, actually make these images that they would worship. And so when we think about idol worship, we may go to that thought. But actually, idol worship is anything that you put above, that you look up to. And if you're looking up to that, you are not looking up to the God of the entire universe. All right? So we know that the word says that, you know, the Lord said that you will have no gods before me. He said that he's a jealous God. He, um, he commands um, loyalty, actually. He commands loyalty. Remember, Jesus said to forsake all and follow him. So in this day, though, I'm sure we can agree that we see a lot of idol worship. We have everything from worshiping your race, your gender, your whatever gender you say you are, uh, idling, um, worshiping um, status, money, power, um, your name, where you're from. We've, there's a lot of that going on right now. And I just wanted to encourage us because I know that even us believers can get a little sidetracked and start looking at other things instead of looking at the Lord, instead of trusting and living for him. So what I want to say is, is that be mindful of anything that you esteem great when it's not God, okay? When it's not the one that died for our sins, when it's not our Savior, our Messiah, anything that we are looking up to and we act like we can't live without it. Also, those things that are that consist of this uh this this worldly element, you know, like I just said, status, power, money, name, fame, those type of things. If we are putting those things above our Savior to the point where when I say above him, I mean that that is what you live for now. That is your goal. That's your aim. That's your, 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 um, you can't stop thinking about it. That's, that's, that's what disrupts your day if it doesn't go as planned. Or, you know, you don't get the um, reaction or the praise you thought you should have gotten from somebody, then your whole day is messed up. Be careful because if that be the case, you have fallen into idol worship. And, and you know what? We should make every effort to avoid doing that, especially us believers, because we have been bought with a price. The God of the entire universe, okay? God the Father decided to send his son, Jesus Christ, to pay the penalty for what we owed, all right? There is nothing that we could do to pay our debt. And Jesus was willing to come in our place and then was also willing to give of himself. The Lord gave his spirit to us that we may be able to live for him that we, and made us new that we could live for him. Now, I'm talking about us sinners, sinners that's dead and trespassing the sins. He decided to make us alive in him. What a shame for us to begin to look at other things, to begin to live for other things, begin to fall into the trap of this world. Because, you know, one of the main things that's going on right now is the power of race. Oh, my goodness. This um, black power, this uh, idea of uh, black supremacy, it really is starting. And, you know, it's so sad because what has happened is the enemy is so sly, okay? Now, I understand that us as a black race, we were oppressed. There was things that happened. And I just really feel like we almost 
hold on to that to almost use it as an excuse to take on this supremacist type attitude. That is what is happening. And we're making that a God. That is what, when I say we, I'm talking about human humanity. Part of humanity is doing that. And so I am just praying and hoping, I want to encourage you, us believers, we don't want to fall into that mess. See, we understand where our identity is. My identity is not in my race. It's not in my my uh, ethnic background. It's just not. My identity is not in that. My identity is in the fact that I have been made a child of the king. That is how I identify now. Okay? And in identifying like that, I bow the knee. I surrender to the Lord of glory. I live for him. My everything is based upon who he is. I am not, um, what do I want to say? I don't get my self-worth out of trying to expound on how great a black woman I am and how many degrees I've, I've, I've attained to and what status I have and how I've rose above it all in this racist world. See, that's not what my motivations are about. My motivations are this, is that in due time, Christ died for the ungodly, of which you and I are. See, that is what I'm all worked up about, right? I take glory in the fact that the one that is glorious decided to lay down his life for me and make me what I could never be myself. That is what I'm excited about. So, you know, I encourage you not to get caught up in this, I want to say, racial supremacy war. It's a racial supremacy thing going on. And there's this idea of this, uh, who I am as far as what I identify as, whether it's some, your gender or your, your, um, your, who, you being this, um, great person as far as a human being goes you living your truth and you know that's what this is this day and age is kind of about it's, it's really centered in glorifying self and i just i really encourage you not to be on that okay what we need to be doing is we need to be glorifying the god of the entire universe we need to be glorifying the one that um reign supreme he's the king of kings and lord of lords that's who we need to be glorifying he is the one that deserves all the praise and all the glory not us and you know he's made us so excellent so wonderful a lot of us have a lot of gifts and talents and expertise and we've been wonderfully and beautifully made it says that in the book of psalms we really have and he has done really great things with us but I encourage you. We don't want to be like Satan. Remember, scripture says that I saw him, saw Satan fall down. You see that? Saw him fall down like lightning. See? He got full of himself. You know, and the Bible talks about how he was a, um, a really like a, a supreme angel. You know, he was, he was, he was um, actually wonderfully made himself. And then he got full of himself and fell. It talks about that, I believe, in... Um, I think it might have been in Ezekiel. Anyway, it's in, in the Old Testament. But what I want to encourage us is that we don't want to um, get full of ourselves and, and that we are actually seeking glory for the things that the Lord has actually put in us. Can you see that? See, remember, the Lord is the one who gave us our race. He gave us our gender. He gave us our uh, status even in life. The Lord gave us the abilities to go to school and, you know, get degrees and learn how to do this and do that. The Lord is the one who gave us the gift of being artistic. And maybe some of us can sing or we can uh, act or we have a, a, a great imagination. So we're very detailed oriented and, and we are uh, talented as far as in design and artistic design. I just pray that... And I encourage all of us to keep God at the center, to always know 
who God is and understand that we are here, we were created for him. In Colossians, it says that the world was created through for him, through him, and by him, basically. You know, the Lord made all of this, and he made it for his glory, not ours, all right? And it's, it's a shame that it seems that we take any little thing to get puffed up about it, you know? And like I said, this whole, that lady... I believe she's the, and I might be saying this wrong, but I think Katanji is the uh, appointed judge, I think it is, or something like that. See, any rate. See, I don't, I don't even get all that deep into it. But any rate, I keep hearing all this stuff about her. And she's a black woman and all of that. And so now we want to make her the poster child, I guess, of, of what we should look to become, right? No, we should not. We're supposed to be looking to Christ. We're supposed to be tr looking to be more like him, all right? Now, I get it. The black race has, has had some level of oppression and suppression. I totally get that. But it's not an excuse to then go to the all the way to the left, and now your whole life living is about how great you can be as a black person, per se. Why don't we seek to be how great we can be as far as a servant of God. And matter of fact, the Lord said that the one that's greatest among you is servant of all. So I just, I've, I've pretty much rambled on. I'm, I'm all over the place with this, but I just really wanted to encourage and talk about the fact that we need to be sure that our identity is in Christ. We need to understand that our value and our worth is only in Christ. It's not about the title or what you work hard to become, any of that. And of course, we all want to be good stewards over our lives, all right? So we want to, to prosper and become this and that. But remember, it's all in Christ. He gets the glory. So if you become a, like even Katanji, what she is, she needs to be living in that position, giving God the glory, okay? And if, and if she was really doing that, she wouldn't have said she didn't know what a woman is because God has clearly let us know what a woman is. He talks about what men and women are in scripture, period. But see, this is what happens when we want to have praise of men. We want to get accepted. We want to, when we want to be sure that we are in good with the world, we say stuff like that, see? But I challenge us believers to stay true to the one that is faithful. Let's stay true to our God. Let's not play this game, okay? And remember, heaven and earth will pass away. You know that? Heaven and earth will pass away. The Lord is going to make a new earth and a new heaven. So we don't need to be trying to um, hold on to any of this here, all right? He's, he's promised us new, he's already given us new life, but it's going to be cult cultivated or um, culminated in the eternal life to come. So this is not forever here. This is not forever. So we just got to keep our sights on what's eternal, what really matters. So at any rate, like I said, I encourage us to avoid the idol worship. Please avoid that at any cost. All right. Um, it's not even worth it. It's not worth it. We want to continue to just worship our God and uh, we want to stay faithful to him. We're going to see him one day and every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that he is Lord. All right. So I just want to talk a little bit about that. I just keep seeing all this out of worship. I mean, I just do. I mean, it's, it's everywhere. It's all on social media. Everybody's a, almost not everybody, but most, it seems like most people is all about it. They are all about this idol worship and these little G gods, okay? And I'm going to say this too. If your faith and trust is not in God alone, then it's in something else, all right? And it's damnable. It's a curse for you to put anything before God. It is an absolute curse. Remember, in the very beginning, remember somebody did this. When the matter of Adam and Eve, Eve when she was confronted with the serpent, and I'm paraphrasing, uh, he said, you know what? What's up with that fruit, basically? She said, you know, 
The Lord said that if we eat from it, we're going to die. He said, you won't, you won't really die. Let me tell you what, what it is. The Lord, the Lord knows that when you uh, eat of it, you'll be um, like him, knowing good and evil and all this stuff. Uh, and then, uh, and then she said, um, well, no, wait, anyway, she considered all of that. So then what happened was she basically, I'm sorry, I got interrupted because I got a call anyway. So what she, what she did was she actually believed the serpent instead of believing what God said. So in fact, she put the serpent above God. All right. So we don't want to do that. We don't want to put nothing above God, all right? Okay, so I hope this is an encouragement. Remember, as you're living life, be mindful of how you're handling situation and things and even your own life, your status, your position in life, what you do. Be sure that God is always at the center. He is always the one being glorified above all at any cost, all right? You guys be blessed.